Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to the Circle Debate Podcast Top 5 Picks of the Week for Week 54. Yes, I know. We're like a one week behind, but... Something like that. Something like that, but it's okay. He's still sleeping. He's been here since last night. Yes. <laughs> he's still... Oh, my God, he's still there. <laughs> he's still there. I just noticed that right now. I, might, I should have to check on him. You okay, bro? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. He's with us. He's with us. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's right. This is old Stevie's one I've been seeing. Ladies and gentlemen, here, of course, con mi hermano. He is the director, making sure that you look and fly and shining all right. Oh, I know. It's so it's bright good. out. I got to get, I hate this window, but it's what oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, my window. If I open my curtains, it'll be like, Jesus, a whole summer come on me, attack me. But yes, the director, ladies and gentlemen, CQ1, Chris Kevin. What up, man? What up? And today's top five, because we're missing Money Mike in action. We've been messaging him, but we had to go ahead and get the starting off the road. But he has top five of the week. As we mentioned, was top five worst, best GMs. So we're going to go ahead and actually uh, see who goes first on this one. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and knock it off first. Might as well go for it. Yeah, it's, I'm I mean, gonna it's, just. It's, it's a waste. It'd be t- it's, it's longer just to do that than to, you know, the wheel. Host yeah, the, because if we do the know, wheal, you know. we would have seen brought to you by Mortal Kombat in theaters now, and we what else we would have saw? It. Oh, and uh, Nature's Harvest, healthy habit breads. That's what we would have saw. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need that sponsorship. Anyone out there wants to get their name on a very up and coming fledgling podcast based out of Los Angeles? Hit us up. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon coming, pretty soon. All right. I'll mm-hmm. take anything, man. I'll take tacos, burritos, pizza. Man, we're, we're hummus, I'll take tacos. I'd love, I'd love to get a hummus a hummus sponsorship and a barbecue sauce sponsor. Oh no. hell yeah, a barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. sauce or hot sauce. I actually want to make like a really hot barbecue sauce. Let's do it. Oh, I'm so down. We should actually do like a freaking do a vlog of making a hot sauce. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm planning on it. I tried oh. I tried last year during quarantine and I messed it up. Uh, oh. I've been too lazy to go out and buy all the raw ingredients. Oh man! But we that's gotta... a different list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with that. To actually do that list with you one day. We should do it for the show. We should do. Uh, yeah, um, I have. That's I'm gonna. I, we're gonna add so much. I mean, this is may not be the place to really make any announcements, but the idea for the podcast is we're gonna branch out from just pro wrestling and sports, like. Music. Mike does food stuff. I got some food ideas. I'm doing music. I want to add like video game content. You know, like we just want to be your one stop shop for all entertainment purposes. Exactly. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. So, yes, top five GMs, right? So, I'm going to start with my, I'll start from these are my best list. I have two honorables that are worse, but I'm going to go ahead and do okay. my top five. I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I did, okay, number five for me, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. Nice. I love it because he was a great GM for SmackDown. And because of, actually, as a matter of fact, everybody is aware that Paul Heyman elevated SmackDown when he was the creative from writing, when he was ahead charge of that. He took SmackDown to another level, made it the number one show than SmackDown. And, I mean, excuse me, than Raw. But Raw was, was shit. And uh, with Paul Heyman being in charge was was great. He made upcoming stars, you know, Benoit, the Guerreros, even um, who else? Was JBLs to, you know, the book. It's just so many. Um, even Rene Dupree at a point, and uh, Rob Van Dam, of course. There's so many that he had on his roster at the time, but I I enjoyed it. He even elevated the cruiserweight division at that time when he was in charge. So that's how you know that Paul Heyman was a great GM for. SmackDown and your great heel as well. Yeah, and he wasn't afraid to push new stars. That was the big thing about ECW. Yeah. Uh, original. Like, when I speak about ECW, I only mean original. I'm the, the rebranding, I never. there's never a conversation I'm going to have where I'm like, oh, they did great things. No. Um, but he was always, he built his own stars um, from all sizes, from all styles, from all races, from all, you know, you had, you know, luchadors and then you had tajiri then you had the rvds then you had the mike awesomes you have like all the different styles it wasn't just like the big dudes small dudes the americans the white the black whatever paul Heyman's door was wide open to all just talent and he wasn't afraid to push anyone who deserved it absolutely i agree 100 he 
And he, and he went all it over to SmackDown, and it, and it worked. It, the, the list of people right there, I don't think Vince would ever have even oh, batted an eyelash at Rene Dupree or Chavo Guerrero. You know? Right? Yeah. And I think I think because of that, a lot of, you know, remember when they did the draft? That's why a lot of, like, the great starts from SmackDown and going to Raw. Because of that, because I guess Heyman had him ready. And then by the time he just already, okay, let's take him to Raw so they can elevate the ratings there. Uh, but as he could, as he could tell, if you go back... Not much was done. I mean, the only highlights I could say will be Benoit's professional career and him winning the World Heavyweight title. I mean, right. SmackDown going to Raw. That's probably the only highlight I could say of, of, from a SmackDown star. All right. Number four. Uh, speaking of SmackDown, another SmackDown GM that I actually enjoyed because she Ooh. was, uh, man, she was the B-I-T-C-H, the first ever GM, Stephanie McMahon. Of course, you can't go wrong with her. Man, she even stole. What did Jericho call her? Like a trash bag hose beast or whatever? <laughs> I got to find that. I got to find that. I'm going to, you continue while I look that up. Uh, Stephanie Base, you know, even Stephanie stole the WWE title. Pretty much signing Brock Lesnar exclusive to SmackDown only. Thus, thus creating, having Raw to create the world heavyweight title. And Stephanie was not a bad GM. She had great moments. Even had a match with her father, Vince, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You know, you know how? So had their match, had her feud with Sable. So she had great moments as a GM for SmackDown, and I enjoyed it very, very much. Mm -hmm. um, She's every bit as she is Daddy's little girl, man. She she nails that whole that whole character perfectly. Oh yeah, definitely. She definitely does. And now my number three. He's my favorite. He's currently my favorite right now, but is he in my top? Uh, I would love to say yes, but he's at least, at least number three. And, that is, and he's always been in previous GMs uh, for either Raw or SmackDown, but he's currently the GM for NXT, and that is, of course, Lord William Regal. Of course, William Regal. That's another man that I love how he, especially his promos, man. Let me tell you something, Sunshine. You know, just him, just and and you could tell you see, you could tell by his the way how he presents himself as authority figure, and I love that. And he's done that on all brands, and he's doing uh, an incredible job in NXT, doing that as a GM for NXT, and he's he's doing great. I just wish I could see him back in the ring one last time. That's one thing I would love to see William Regal. Someone pushes his buttons on NXT. And him just snaps, fuck it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge this motherfucker and just put it in a match. I would love to see that. But I guess William Regal's not, you know, going to be in the ring anytime soon. He's, I guess he's, he's up there. He's, 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 fuck, he's, he's been in some battles for sure. Oh, yeah. They, uh, hell yeah. I love William Regal. Especially, of course, the bad ones, with his heel ones, especially with the, uh, the Jericho moment, of course, the cajot peeing on William Regal's, you know, little T. <laughs> yeah, in the team. In the team. Uh, and, of course, with Tajiri, I love that, man. That was amazing, too. I, that's That was another storyline that I love from Regal, him being a GM, being an authority figure. I enjoyed it. All right, number two. This guy, another SmackDown alumni, because I love him. Because he it always fucking says this, and he said it last time. Well, let me tell you something, player. Tonight, you're facing one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker. It is like, that's right. Teddy Long, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you know, the bouncing, the moving, that's just that's, that's Teddy Long for you. And he did a great job. I loved it. Oh, yeah. He did a great job. And... um I'm glad they got him out of that role, the manager role. I don't know if you remember when remember he was managing, I think, Mark Henry and um, and Rodney Mack. He was pretty yeah. – yeah. That was like uh, Bruce's progression era kind of. Yeah. Like. Uh, he didn't fit well as a manager. I'm like, oh, Well, I mean, he came from a managerial – he was a manager before he was a ref and then went to ref and then became GM and then – Yeah. You know, yeah. I liked him as a GM. I think, he, I think he did a great job. I don't think he, he was – he had a lot of sense of humor, and that's what he brought to SmackDown, and he did great matches, too. So I, I, I enjoyed it. Nothing wrong with that. My number uno. I'm oh. excited. It might be mine. We might have the same one. Maybe, right? And, of course, the biggest one because when we saw that on a Monday night, 
two of the biggest head competitors that hated each other, choking each other out. They wanted to kill each other. A hug. They shook hands. They, you can once you heard that music. I'm back. And better. Than, yep, that's right. Eric Bischoff, ladies and gentlemen, number one for me in the books. Because Eric Bischoff, for one, I was my jaw dropped when I first saw him on WWE television. Him being the Raw GM, he did a great. He did not do bad. He introduced a lot with the Elimination Chamber. He introduced. He brought back the World Heavyweight Title. When I school. love Elimination Chamber, man. Like yeah. that's so cool. I love it, man. I and I know he said it wasn't his idea realistically, but I love how he presented it, like that it was his idea creating that structure. And he did a great job. Eric Bischoff, hands down, one of the best GMs for me. Good or bad. He especially my favorite segments with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. I love that one. It's <laughs> Especially the one he Austin is forcing him to drink a lot of beer, eating food, and getting him throwing up at the cocktail waitress. Of like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Aaron and Bishop with a hangover the next following day. You know, that was just it's hilarious. I love it. Bishop, my number one guy. Bishop, are you watching this or are you listening here on audio platforms? Come to the show, man. We'd like to talk to you more. You know, we would like to go ahead and have a conversation with you. We'll have a hell of a good time. Two honorable mentions that I'll mention that are not my cup of tea. No pun intended to Mr. Regal, but <laughs> yeah, but no, not my cup of tea. So I would say, of course, one of them I dislike was the PC. The raw GM was a computer, a fucking laptop. Oh, the uh, yeah, yeah. The anonymous GM. Mm -hmm. I hate. I didn't like it. It was just annoying. I was annoyed. Was that, my like that wasn't back when it was supposed to be. Mustafa Ali, right? This was back before. This was like a previous angle before that, right? Is this uh, when yeah. um, uh, Corey Graves would, would like check the computer, or no? Or is this when Michael Cole would check the computer? Yeah, Michael Cole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's like, man, yeah. have your attention, uh, please. Oh yeah, my God, that's and just then Michael annoying. Cole would make the announcement. Yeah, yeah. that's because they tried that so many times. They tried that with the Corey Graves and the random cell phone calls, and then they tried doing it with like the Mustafa Ali thing, which I I don't know where that even went. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Well, I, there was some rumor about who it was supposed to be with that, with the one you're talking about. Uh, who? Like, there, like someone it? talked about, like, oh, it was eventually going to be somebody. Like, they had someone in mind, but they never went with it, and I forget who that was. Mm, okay. I didn't enjoy that much at all. I disliked that it. it wasn't, like, my cup of tea. It was annoying. Right. Honestly, for me, it was annoying. See, hear me. Oh, that's right. It was porn swallowing. Oh, oh, that's uh, okay. It was supposed to be Horn Swoggle in the end. Yeah. <laughs> you still, you still made that list. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You still made the list. And of course, this other one. Um, of course, he's uh, right now in charge of talent relations. Hey, people power. Hey, Johnny Ace. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, he just didn't like it. I just him being a raw GM, horrible. Just didn't, he had no type of character. He got his ass whooped. That's all he did. Of course, that feud was CM Punk and then was Cena. But was he the best GM? Nah, sucked. Yeah, no, not really. No, he sucked. I mean, out of all of them, I was gonna say either him, Mike Adelaide. Is it Mike Adelaide or yeah, Mike Adelaide or Brad Maddox? But I rather just choose this guy in my list. Cause he sucks. Cause you have the voice. The voice. So there, if you guys disagree with my list, comment below on this video and let me know. Tell me what was your worst and best GMs. But now let's take it to the director. I want to hear his top five? Yeah. Best. Um. So I have my list right here. I put it together pretty quickly. Um. I, I guess it's just like my favorites with a mix of effective. Um, so I don't really have any worse ones, and I don't have any honorable mentions. Uh, my number five, I consider him in this position as a GM, even though I know he's also actually the executive president, but he is the on-screen figurehead of a company. And uh, he's just, uh, he's got that, that, that consciousness going for everybody right now, and that's Don Callis. Oh, my God. I, I think uh, it, it's just funny. It's just funny. It's, I like it. It's 69 me, 69. He's really, 
the moments that he gives Excalibur to call him a human dump truck and garbage can, and it's just <laughs> it's great. And, you know, uh, the Forbidden Door, it's not that forbidden between the two companies because they already have a good relationship. Um, so for him to transcend both shows um, is pretty seamless. Uh, and I, I, I like to see the future of where that angle goes because we talk about it on our reviews that we have no idea where it's headed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm, I'm entertained with Don Callis for sure. I've been entertained since he was in uh, original ECW as the virus. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, and he had the little. Uh, what was before, that, by the way? What My, my apologies. What was no, it? No, was it a diamond or was it like a. It was, a red, it was like a red gem, like some, oh. some trans, you know, some transcendental shit. Uh, okay. Number four is a tie because they're, they're almost exactly the same person on both sides of the pond, even though they're both from the UK. And that's both Johnny Saint and William Regal running NXT divisions on both sides of, you know, the really? ocean. Yeah. Both are very well respected veterans of the sport. Uh, William Regal is obviously well, much more well known within both countries and especially in America. Johnny Saints doing the damn thing in UK. When they announced him as the UK GM, uh, when they announced that there was going to be an NXT UK, I was like, oh, hell yeah, that's pretty rad. I get it. I get it. Um, you know, they don't really, they're not controversial. They they do their job. They don't take any shit from the people the backstage. You know, if there's ever an angle um, in NXT, they're like, oh, I, you know, let's say Johnny Gargano. I was like, that's not fair. I don't like this. This shouldn't happen. Lynn Regal's like, yeah, well, on top of you not dealing with it, now deal with it because you're in a match right now. Like, I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and he's not a heel. He's completely cheered just by him walking on stage. Either one of them, for sure. Just overall, completely respected. Number three. I liked number three for a lot of reasons. One of them was it absolutely elevated Seth Rollins to the goddamn moon. And that's the authority. Oh, my God. Yeah. The authority was fantastic as in that position. Um you know, it was essentially both Triple H and Stephanie, um, who do have legal uh, roles within the company, but they were also playing the GM role as well. Don't um, forget Kane, too. Kane, well, Kane was, was like the corporate Kane. Well, he was like the enforcer, sort of. He's the director of operations. And then J&J Security. And then, obviously, Seth Rollins, who at one point had three belts? Or two belts. I know two we belts. had the U.S. and the world. That was it. Two belts. That was it. That, that was cool. I love that. Um, that whole character within Seth Rollins, I loved. That was my favorite Seth Rollins. Um, yeah, for sure. Authority was awesome. Uh, a good stretch of Raw for how many years that was. And obviously <laughs> ended with Seth Rollins beating Triple H at WrestleMania, which I didn't think was going to happen. I loved it. I was like, oh, shit, they did it. They finally gave something back to an up-and-comer. Uh, number two, Playa Playa, Teddy Long. <laughs> Entertaining, charismatic, great on the mic. You dance with him. He wouldn't take any shit. He would give it back. Uh, the dude was just charismatic 101, man. Like He came out and people cheered. I don't think he ever had a heel moment at all. Wow. Um, in the As you know, in most of that GM role. I don't know what happened after that, if he became a manager like you said for mark henry um but no as a gm yeah people tuned in i think it was smackdown right yeah people tuned in to watch teddy long for sure they're like oh what's he gonna do this week uh probably the most entertaining and loved gm on main roster i think of all time and the opposite is gonna be number one and it's gonna be number one for both shows okay and that's gonna be while he was running wcw first in the nwo because Eric Bischoff is the shit. Hell yeah. The most, Hell hated yeah. Man, the most hated man in pro wrestling history, backstage and uh, on screen. I loved it. He walked out. He was a heat machine. Um, and that's just in his NWO tenure. I mean, he got cups thrown at him. He got soda pop, hot dogs, whatever the WCW crowd can toss. They tossed it at him. Um, and then him coming over to Raw. <laughs> As the new GM was such a barn burner of a moment. It was just holy fucking shit. Vince literally hired his biggest enemy and made him his best friend. <laughs> I all right, I that's what shocked the shit I out loved of me. it. I was like, oh shit. It was just it was heat incarnate. Um one of my favorite non-wrestling moments for sure, as far as like a non-talent goes. Um Yeah, that's it, man. It's my favorites with a little bit of most effective mixed in for sure. 
Yeah, definitely, man. Bishop, you took it off right here, man. Yeah, you were yeah, number you one guy. No one, no one can dis disargue. No. What was the um, 65 weeks? What's the name of his podcast? 83 weeks. 83 weeks. That was all Bischoff. All Bischoff. Him and uh, Conrad Bischoff Thompson. and Russo on opposite sides. And Russo did a fantastic fucking job climbing back up and taking it over. But that first those, that first year and uh, like three or four months, man, just straight fire. Oh, yeah. I definitely agree. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, unfortunately, Money Mike was not able to join us. I don't know where is he. He probably took him in the nap or he has something to do. Matt of Wack Callis, of course, he's busy running Impact and he's busy running, busy <laughs> running the he's, kitchen. He's, he's cleaning up the van and getting it tuned up to head back to Winnipeg. Exactly. <laughs> but let's go to the wheel of picks to see what is the next following. Let's do it. Uh, five. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And let's do it. All right, here we go. We're going to spin that wheel. Oh, Ooh, baby. Hell yeah. You see that? That's a good one. That's a good one. That's going to be a good one. WCW. Oh, yeah. I can do that it. right now, off the top of my head. Just, <laughs> I, I can literally just go, bing, 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 done. But I'll uh, wait. You gotta, yes. make, you gotta give the people what they want, and they wanna wait for shit. Exactly, when plus you gotta wait for the others next time when they come in. But yes, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Next week is WCW champions, basically best WCW champions. Or we can do worse. What can we do, best or worse or both? Well, I already know who worst is. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> he's still alive. Um, no, we do just I, I don't know, whatever. Dealer's choice. You could do we could do best or worst. You can do both. I don't know. I'm gonna do I'll, I'll do best. I'll pick best. So Oh wait a minute. Looks like I got a response. No, I didn't. Uh individual to here. Let's see. Ah, uh, see I knew <laughs> he fell asleep. Ah, he fell asleep. Yes, uh, Delos Miguel. <laughs> but we'll have him on next week for sure. Okay. No worries. All right. I'll we'll let Money Mike know. So Money Mike, you're watching this. You already know. He's but it's, me. it's his show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A quick, short Sunday afternoon for you guys. Enjoy yourselves on your Sunday afternoon or night or evening, whatever you're doing, and. Next week, of course, don't forget, we will be back, of course, with another one of weekly episodes and just discussing, obviously, what we, what, what's coming up, what we don't, what double or nothing. And then also with our thoughts about this later on today's WWE WrestleMania Backlash, which I said it on, on Friday's episode. I'm not watching, but I mean, I'll read the, I'll read the stories of who won. I, Mike said it himself. Mike said that he purchased Peacock if cesaro wins the wwe oh, I know, I mean, right? universal title mike said he'll publicly apologize because of that so <laughs> he said it himself so i'm looking forward but there you have it ladies and gentlemen it's the devious one i'm gonna see here what uh, the director the director baby wants to make sure that you fly and you stay high because he wants you to shine so better be make all right. make <laughs> there you go and we'll see you guys next time.